brought to you by the Journal of Kentucky Lexington Monitor, jklm.us, on the World Wide Web, jklm.us. I have a motion by Councilmember Ellinger and a second by Councilmember Myers to extend the time to 15 minutes, which would give you an additional 12 minutes. So uh, any discussion? All in favor of extending the time, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Mr. Webb. Thank you. My point here that nobody is screaming about those projects and that they are not yet proceeding as scheduled after they were announced. The reason being that most reasonable people understand that unfortunate and unforeseeable things do happen in this business, and they often take time to resolve. But this doesn't make the sponsors to be villains or charlatans, as many have suggested in our case. In our case, there are also other private parties involved, including investors, potential tenants and condo purchasers, and one of the nation's leading hotel companies. These private parties wish to remain that way, private, for whatever reason, and that is their right and privilege. Very recently, in a meeting of this council, members discussed this fact that Marriott was no longer interested in operating a JW Marriott Hotel in downtown Lexington as there was no need for additional hotel rooms. Antagonists have previously, on many occasions, contacted the Marriott Home Office, advising them that Lexington did not want a JW Marriott Hotel, and asked that they stay away from Centerpoint. Oftentimes, blatantly, blatant fabrications, four-letter words, and personal insults became the order of the day in this discourse. The good news from all of this is that Marriott Corporation is still the major player in the world hospitality and travel market, and they still believe in the future of Lexington. Attached to this statement is a letter from the Senior Vice President of Hotel Development for Marriott, which I received this week in response to a request that he clarify the interest of his company in this project. You can read it for yourself and draw your own conclusions. Now let us turn to the development project itself. We will not revisit the history of the demolition of the buildings except to remind everyone that none of these structures was on the National Registry of Historic Places and a study a few years ago uh, that reviewed the historic buildings in downtown placed none of them on any such list. Ultimately, the Courthouse Design Review Board determined that a restoration of these buildings was not economically viable or feasible. This was not surprising since the Rosenberg family and the Gray Construction Group had teamed with the Kentucky Science and Technology Center back in 2005 to try to rehab the old Woolworths building, also situated within that block. Unfortunately, they too found that the economics simply didn't work for them either, even with the new market tax credits that were then available. That building was then demolished, and now the other buildings are also gone, so further discussion about them would be moot. Development is by its nature an optimistic business. Developers look at the potential of projects regularly. The great majority of them are not pursued. Read our best-selling trilogy, A Still Small Voice. Go to skybridgepress.com and click on the books link, A Still Small Voice.